Okay. Hello, everyone. I literally just stopped streaming, like, 20 seconds ago. And I realized I have to do patch notes before I watch Dr. House. So, here we are. Ooh, patch notes. So, we're on patch 10.3. I'd like to say I've played a lot of leagues since the last patch because of the Mecha Kingdoms event. As we see Kogoth's ample thigh and ass a little bit. Um, what am I thinking? I think ADs suck, as I've just mentioned to Elijah about two minutes ago, and he left for work. Um, yeah, ADCs suck ass. What's strong? I don't know. What's weak? I don't know. I don't really care. I'm just here to react to the patch notes more than anything. I'm not here to find that in-depth of a fucking game analysis, because I'm busy with school. But, let's see it. Hi, friends. These patch notes are very big. Oh, great. Look at all our bug fixes. No. Look at Prestige Edition Senna. That skin sucks ass. Look at the Akali work. Nerf. Look at what they did to my girl. Oh, they know! Look at the buffs to jungle. Yeah, okay. And maybe even more importantly, we got some amazing VFX updates this patch for some of our oldest and most beloved champions. Take this poll if you're looking for TFT. I am not. Oh, wow. They give us a little, uh, little highlight here. So, we have Azir, Galio, Corky, Sedge, Ezreal, Yumi, and then we have a whole bunch of people nerfed. This is very interesting, and I'll talk about that soon. But here are the skins. Uh, I have to say, on the topic of skins, I don't really much like these skins. I think they're kind of ass. Um, generally, I think all the Heartseeker skins are ass. I think the best one might be Lucian's, or Quinn's, maybe, maybe Quinn's. But Lucian's definitely, like, I think one of the best, if not the best Heartseeker, and it's a pretty shit skin. Um, True Damage Senna blows, uh, the Prestige Edition blows, oh no, True Damage Senna's fine, the Prestige Edition blows cock, the regular one is fine. Um, Heartseeker, Jinx, and Yumi suck balls. Uh, so, I've been kind of blown with what I said about skins, right? I was astounded by the quality of the Mecha Kingdom skins, and now I am just saddened by the quality of skins. These are the skins after the Mecha Kingdoms ones, right? I believe. And the Dragon Slayer ones, obviously. Dragon Slayer were good, but the, those in Mecha Kingdom kind of re were revealed at the same time, so I count them as one group. These skins blow dick. The next set of skins we're getting, Blood Moon, I feel like they also blow dick. I feel like Blood Moon skins and Heartseeker skins are some of the lowest quality skins there are. And I actually saw someone do the math. Someone said, like, oh, if Riot continues this trend of how many, like, skins they release and stuff. Let me actually increase the size a little bit so you guys can, like, see it. There we go. I'll, like, stretch it out a bit. There we go. Uh, if they continue releasing how many they're releasing now, which is congruent, or not congruent, parallel to last year, that means after, I think, spring or during the summer, they have to release 20 skins a patch. Which is crazy. But Riot has done crazier things. Like nerf ADCs into the ground. But anyway, um, yeah, these can suck ass. So, moving forward. Akali. I have strong opinions on this. I feel like Akali sucks so much dick right now, right? That she's actually in a semi-decent spot for people who pour 1,000 or so hours into Akali. I feel like if you're an Akali main and you took the time to learn her, you do good. You do pretty good. But to get to that point on her is insane. Like, you have to be really fucking good at the game. And even then, I feel like she's not crazy. She's in line. Obviously, if you're fed with an assassin, you should be killing people left and right. But for some reason, they don't want Akali to do that. And Akali doesn't even do it that well because she has to wait for most of her things. So let's see what they're doing. Let's see what they're saying. I see this as a major nerf. I already know, kind of know what they're doing. But let's see if they changed it. So, as promised, we've done some major nerfs on Akali that's going live this patch. These changes are the result of her presence in pro play, of course. And aim to trim power there and more... There more than for everyday players. Uh, with that in mind, one of the biggest issues we wanted to tackle was the sheer number of options she had when approaching fights or surviving bad situations, of which they already took a lot away, aka the Shroud, and using under tower. She was t way too flexible, being able to split push and team fight, and also not c being committed to a specific playstyle, early domination, scaling, etc. So what they do? They increase the cost of the Q. 
that's kind of bad. The W move speed is greatened, but it's hastened, so you don't have it for as long. Which I agree with. I think that's a good change. Now, the change I really don't like and I think sucks cock is instead of it being a free target, aka you could use it whenever, you actually have to target someone. Which honestly, for people like me, kind of makes it easier. It's a point and click now. But that means you can't escape with it. Or at least the first instance. Maybe the second one you can. But, um... Yeah. It's like... I don't know. I think this is horrible, and I think she's just going to be so bad, and the Akali means are going to probably cry, and this is, this sucks. This sucks that she was nerfed so much, she was so fun when she came out, and she was OP. She was nerfed to where she's kind of fun and okay, if you're really good at her, and now she's, I feel like, worse off. Maybe she'll still be playable, but God is just going to be that much more harder to do it. And I think they're nerfing her even more next patch, but we'll wait and see for that in two weeks. Okay, Aphelios. I feel like Aphelios in this patch is already pretty weak, kind of. I still think he's his late game is really good, even after all the nerfs to his uh, Infernum ulti. Uh, and his Crescendum damage. Honestly, the Crescendum isn't that strong unless it's a niche situation. Even if you're using it on someone right in their face, it's not always guaranteed that you're going to win, which should be the case. If you're an ADC going into close on their ass melee range you should win with that weapon 90 to 80 percent of the time and you usually don't unless it's like you set it up right but then you could argue okay well you have to set it up right but to do that is very difficult and it, he he's very difficult to play but i feel like he's still good he's just more difficult they're kind of doing to ophelius what they did with the kali he was fun a little complicated like a kali and very op when he came out they nerfed him, so he's fun and pretty good if you know how to play him. I just hope they don't nerf him more. Now, what they're doing here today is a nerf, but it's not like a damage nerf. It's more of like how you play him nerf. So, originally, the mark of the Q on the sniper was infinite. Now, they lowered it to 1800, which I thought it was going to be 2000. I thought I saw 2000, so maybe they nerfed it more or I had it wrong, but... This actually makes a big difference because you can actually, and it's what Sneaky I saw did in one of his clips, you could set the the crescendum queue and aka plant a sniper somewhere and you can across the map auto someone so many times they die. And like there was almost, I mean, if you get caught by it, you, Aphelios is either extremely fed and can do that to you normally anyway, or you're stupid enough to stay in the trap long enough to, for that to happen, which at that point you kind of deserve it. But it's like, the only thing I'm concerned about, I think it's fine that they're doing it. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous, that's infinite range. I just hope the range doesn't get in the way of laning and the ulti. The main thing is the ulti. Laning, okay, maybe you could like go farther, farther away with it, right? But if I ult you and I get the sniper mark on you and I can't auto you after ulting you with this, that's stupid. I haven't tested it. I don't know if it works that way. But if that's the case, this is one of like, this is a really bad nerf to the sniper. If not, this is just keeping him in line, and I'm fine with it. But other than that, he's pretty good, just hard to play. Azir. Azir is generally, I think, in a decent spot. I actually think he does decent damage. His early isn't that bad. Once you, The more time goes on, the more stronger he becomes. He's like the AP Kog'Maw, in my opinion. Except his early doesn't suck that much cock. That much cock. It sucks cock, but not as much as Kog'Maw's. Um... Generally, if they overbuff Azir, they're probably going to run him into the ground or potentially rework him, like they've kind of already done. Uh, they kind of gave him the Corky treatment where they remove the W pass or no, the the passive passive of giving attack speed based on cooldown, and just moved it to the W levels. But um, I think he's in a decent spot, and any buff to him, as long as it's not too crazy, hopefully it's like a, a, a slice of life buff where he just gains more stats or something. But even then, it's kind of scary, because Azir, I feel like, can be really good. And it's not hard to play him that much. You just have to know how to space well. But anyway, what are they doing? Enough enough talking. What are they doing? My prayer has seen the better days, but has the risk of power tripping. That is very true. We're cautiously buffing him. So his mana is going up by a little bit, which is good for his early. And then the wall length is increasing. This realistically does nothing, and this is fine. 
Corky. So I think Corky is weird. He has a very weak early game. Until you get Sheen and or Six, you're pretty weak. Uh, after that, your mid game is decent, but you'll probably lose the weak early game out to another AD, and then they'll just get fed over you. But um, Corky's mid is pretty good, and Corky's late is surprisingly well as well. Just because of the fact he does a lot of mixed damage, and it's a lot of damage. Corky does not do little damage. He does a lot of damage, and it's burst, too. It's not like AD where it's like over time, kind of. Even though ADs kind of just chunk people. With him, it's like just straight up burst after burst after just like face smacking burst. So it's not bad. I think Corky's pretty good. It's just hard to get where you want to be with him. And he kind of has to go in with his W. So what are they doing? We want Corky's special delivery to be used more aggressively towards enemies. Oh, wow, really? Uh, so the damage per second is 0.05 damage. Okay, so it's scaling better, which is whatever. The burn duration lasts longer, which is pretty good. And then it now slows champions that are directly hit and knocked aside. Oh, that's really good. Okay, so they really buffed the package. Quirky could definitely be a good team fighter. Because it's basically like a very long rumble ult that repositions you. And can engage, kind of. Because then you can use your W right after. I think this actually does help Quirky a lot. I think we might see him played a little bit more. Maybe in pro play, because I know they love him in pro play. No one plays Corky in, in regular play. But he's not bad. And this only helps him, and I agree with it, and I like it. Diana. Uh, she's been rampant. Um, I think they kept nerfing her. Maybe they're done with the nerfs, but I don't expect to see a buff. If they have her here, they're probably nerfing her. So what are they doing? Base mana decreased, W damage for decreased. Mercury's in retrograde, and that means nerfs to Diana. So her mana is going down, so she can't spam early. Her early game sucks ass, and the damage per W is worse. Okay, so her early game's nerfed. I'm fine with that. I feel like Diana had a really good early game now that she could dash to people pre-6 and like get on them with the new passive and Conqueror being what it is. Uh, I agree with these. I think this is fine. I think Diana's kind of getting on the weak side, though. People are like going over her initial luster, and she's not really cared for anymore. Aside from the people who were already playing her. Or picked her up now. Black O. I feel Black O is really weak. After the games I just played, Black O sucked in my game. So now I think he's weak, but that's biased. So what are they doing? They're hitting Echo Jungle. I haven't seen him jungle in a while. Uh, he's doing less to jungle monsters. I haven't seen Echo Jungle, and I think it sucks ass anyway. So that's fine. They're really just enforcing Don't Go Jungle. Ezreal. Ezreal's pretty weak after taking away Klepto. However, he does have a very good niche position with Conqueror. That being said, I think he's pretty good. I don't think he's bad. I think he's a very versatile AD. He's similar to Corky, but like just less so. He doesn't really have teamfight potential. He just has more safety and kind of utility with the slow if you get Frozen Gauntlet. But, um... He's not bad. I would say he's pretty good. I played him, I fed early, and then I just got so far into the game. I didn't do crazy damage, but I did damage that was noticeable. And as an AD, that's not too good. But for what you're getting with Ezreal, you're getting safety and security, it's not bad. So I think he's in a good spot. But he is on the weaker side. MF outdated, Aphelios overrated, long have you waited, no longer debated. I hate when like companies become like this. It reminds me of um Smite. Or high res, whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't want them to get too meme -y. Like, when they meme too hard, it's so cringy. But anyway, what are they doing? Mana growth is up. That's pretty good. Attack speed growth is up. This doesn't really matter, but I guess it's good if you're, like, trading, which you're supposed to as Ezreal with autos. A lot of people ignore Ezreal's autos, but they actually do, like, a decent amount of his damage. If you're smart with them. So, this is just tiny little buffs here and there. I don't think this will improve him greatly at all in any way, shape, or form. It'll probably just feel a little better, and it won't be that noticeable. Galio. I think Galio sucks ass. I think he's the worst, or one of the worst champions in this game, and they still need to overbuff him. It means to help out Galio plays in normal skilled games who get more from the tornado element of his Q. So they're buffing the tornado duration, giving it a half a second. So it's going to do more damage that way, and then it ticks more, so overall more damage. That's good. They're giving damage back to him, but not touching his scalings. This is interesting. Again, I think this changes nothing, but they're going in the right direction. They're probably going to keep buffing him because Galio sucks cock.
And he used to be so fucking cool and fun, man. Oh my god, the old Galio was so stupid. The massive, like, lane-wide taunt. And then, like, the stupid Q he would throw out. Oh my god, it was so dumb. Old guy was so ugly, too. God. Alright, Leona. Leona is one of the best supports in the game, and she's probably getting nerfed because she's one of the best supports in the game. Uh, probably what I'm thinking is she does too much damage, or she locks down people too fast, because her cooldowns are pretty fucking low. Honestly, I think hopefully we see something to the ulti. Ulti cooldown may be higher, because that shit's always fucking up. Or maybe just the cooldown of, like, her Q or E or something, but who knows. So anyway, what are they doing? Leona, Leona's damage is eclipsing her opponent's HP bar too much. I mean, er, early game Leona kind of always does that. She always did that, but apparently it's a problem now, as Spotify tells me now. Uh, so how much are they nerfing it by? 60, 100, 200? So they're nerfing it late game, which I thought early game was her problem, but whatever. And then Jane's Blady. Yeah, this, this is whatever. This does nothing. MF. MF is in a similar position to Ezreal, kind of. You're really only playing if you're going Tank Buster. I mean, okay, that's not true. You're either going Tank Buster, Lethality, or Crit. Of which, I think Lethality is the most used. I think Crit is the best one. And I think Tank Buster is also okay. However, MF... I don't know why she's so fucking bad. I guess it's because the RNG of the Q. And obviously she has no mobility. Um, and you really need to, like have a really good position in the team fights and not get disturbed so there's a lot that goes into the character that like you have to either pray for or really set up to do decent or really good but i feel like if mf does good she could just like wash the game but it's very rare that that happens because mf just like die so what are they doing attack speed growth up this does fucking nothing shari has enough attack speed Rumble. I think Rumble is not that good, but not that bad. I haven't really seen him, but I don't feel like he's bad. He's really just like an ulti bot. He's like Kennen. It's like, yeah, Kennen's laning can be good. Yeah, Rumble's laning can be good. But what do you really pick him for? The ulti. I remember in season four, around there where I joined, Rumble was like, okay, you want to win a team fight? You pick fucking Rumble. If you were bad at the ulti, you might as well not play the character. I remember that's how it used to be. But what I'm hoping is they put more power into his regular kit so he's not just a multi-bot. But I'm hoping we're going to see buffs to his kit. Regular kit. What are they doing? Cleaning off some stats to nice clean whole numbers and pulling power out of his W's defenses so he's not so much a terror in mid lane. Wow. So his armor's rounded, his AD's rounded, his W gets less move speed. Wow. And the shield is less in the mid game by a decent amount actually um yeah this doesn't really change anything i feel like this is whatever sedge sedge now has a bonus attack speed at level one frost armor now removed when damage from all monsters and wait what wait what wait they're buffing her i'm so confused i this looks like a nerf cautiously buffing sedge where we're also removing some elements over past that feel unintuitive. If we proactively remove it now, we'll have more room to buff in the future since pro players won't exploit the safety it brings. So the attack speed, she gets 10% level 1. That probably helps a lot with her clear. And then frost armor, damage from epic monsters and enemy champions. Damage from all monsters and enemy champions. Okay, so I guess she can use her armor more effectively in the jungle. So that way she... um. I don't fucking know. If she fights like the little ones, they do like two less damage or something. Who knows? This change is kind of stupid. I don't really see like anything with this. Okay, Senna. I've actually played a lot of Senna, mostly ADC. I still think Senna as a support sucks cock and she's really useless compared to other supports that could be played. And she's like a pseudo support. It's like playing her, playing Lux. I think her she's better than Lux if the player's good. But even then, if both players are good, I'd actually rather Lux. It's a harder, it's a harder lockdown. Who the fuck is ringing my bell? Uh, it's a harder lockdown. But um, I think AD Center right now is better. But after these changes, which I kind of already know what they are, unless they change them, I think Support Center is actually going to be the better one. But let's see. 
While we love Senna's flexibility as both a marksman and support, she's a little too strong as a marksman, even though they've kept nerfing her marksman part. Or adjusting the miss wraith drop chances to support her role as a support. So basically, this is actually really fucking good. So she had a 20% chance, which is, you know, 1 in 5. Uh, on regular minions, she doesn't kill, and 100% on cannons, even if she kills them. Now it's 25% on anything Senna doesn't kill, and then 1.67, aka the regular amount for anything she kills, including caddies. Um, and now Spoils of War, Relic Shield and Steel Shoulder Guards, um, that Senna gets credit for now counts as killed by Senna. So even if the support gives you the uh, caddy, you won't get the guaranteed soul. So basically, you're losing out on one guaranteed soul every three waves early game, early to mid game, which honestly is fine. But the fact that they raised the chance from twenty percent to twenty five percent on the support center means I think support center is the way to go. Or even if you are a D, you're gonna just like get more from not CSing. So it's, it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't go support. To me, at least. Unless you want to have fun. I play her to have fun, because I think she's a fun AD. But anyway, the E. I was kind of by a curse of the black mist longer become visible. Wow. Okay, that's a big bug. Uh, so yeah, like I said, this isn't really a nerf to AD Senna. It's just a major buff to A or to support Senna. And I think support Senna is either on par or slightly better than AD. But AD is still not bad. It's just it's Senna, and she's not a carry. She's a hybrid. She's a hybrid support carry. So she's not going to carry. She's not going to support. She's going to do a little bit of both. But she's fun. And I like this change. I don't think it's bad. Set. Uh, what do I think of set? I think set is a little on the strong side. Purely. Purely for the one fact of his W. That whole ability is the whole problem. But even then it's not really a problem. He kind of blows dick late. If he's ahead, he's ahead. You're not going to kill him anyway. But um, his W is the main issue. I'm thinking they're going to nerf his W because people are probably complaining about it. Even though I do think it's a little overtuned, but for the rest of his kit being what it is, and he kind of falls off really hard late, I feel like it's okay. He has a decently pretty good early, actually. His mid game is okay, and then his late game kind of scales down, but he's not like useless slash ignorable. He's mostly just like, okay... After the ult and after he Ws, he's not going to do anything else. Unless his W comes back off cooldown. That's basically all you worry about him. Very simple champion, but he's probably going to get nerfed. What are they doing? He's been breaking some faces with ease, as he should. He's not really getting put to the test. We're going to give him the old one two of nerfs. Okay. So his health regen is going down. Okay, I thought that was 0. 0.25 to 8. I was like, wait, what the fuck did they just do? So his base health regen is fine. That's fine. His passive makes up for it, kind of. The cooldown is going up on W. I agree with that. I think it's a little crazy. Uh, and the base damage is going down by a little bit. It's fine. It's mostly the grit that's like the big issue with it. This is fine. I hope they don't nerf him more because I think he's fine. Sona. Uh, what do I think of Sona? I haven't seen her. I don't know how she's doing. I would assume very weak because she literally melts like paper. And she barely does anything in lane. There's better poke champions. There's better heal champions. There's better engaged champions. She's kind of like Karma in that sense. Where like she does everything. But just not well. So what are they doing? Um, Sona's new kicks have been showing off all over town. Playing a bit back since she's slightly too fly. on zoom zoom. Uh, so it was over buffed in their eyes. To 25% plus 0.04% per 100 ap to 20 plus 0.03 what was it before i don't even remember if this is still a buff from the original e then it's fine but i still think sona's weak as fuck and she needs more buffs yumi apparently this fucker is still an issue and we're probably gonna see her nerfed even though i think she sucks ass now and um yeah i, I think this champion was a lot like ivern when she came out she was really fucking good she's very unique now that she was too unique and too good, she got nerfed into the ground, and now she's useless and has a useless fucking gimmick. So what do they do? She's no longer just a heal bot. Can't, cats can't be trained to heal anyway. Her Q should be more worthwhile to cast even in the mid to late. So what do they do? They nerfed the empowered damage. 
and they made it a current health scaling as well but it's very tiny this shit's ass uh the cost of the queue is 90 at all ranks that's decent but kind of still ass w silence no longer counts as a mobilizing effect it should that's very weird it really should and then e the heal is going down from the one single heal that she has now compared to the two before um i still think she's ass i don't think anyone's gonna play her even in pro play she's probably not gonna be played this champion's a mess okay jungle let's see what they're doing here and now i'm not a jungle main i think jungle players suck cock especially in this season in my elo and i think jungle is pretty fucking boring i only play Yi and maybe some other people barely because i never get jungle after the 2019 pre-single preseason jungle changes we nerfed jungle through their xp they're gaining around 40 xp less per minute as a result we're giving back around half the xp so they're giving back 20 um additionally we're making sure krugs feel more worthwhile yeah i never do krugs while still requiring the intended time for the reward trade-off finally we're looking to address the funnel strategy by tightening the minion gold restriction further wow so large monster xp you gain 10 first large monster bonus xp you gain less interesting minion gold penalty if more than half of your farm gold is from minions remove the item completely Oh, wow. 13 less gold from lane minions if more than half of your farm gold is from minions. Wow. So you can actually, like, funnel early, but you can't keep funneling. Okay. So Krugs. Uh, I don't know what these numbers mean. Base XP. I don't give a shit. Okay, so basically what they're saying is you're just going to level up slightly faster. I think jungle still sucks cock. I don't really care. Annie got some VFX update. Malphite. Nautilus. All VFX updates. Very cool. Very nice. ARAM, I don't care. Bug fixes, wow, that's a lot. And upcoming skins, I talked about those. Finally, that wasn't as long as a patch as I thought. Overall, this patch kind of blew like dick. There was nothing really apparent. Some people got slight buffs that I kind of play, maybe. A lot of people got nerfed, some who didn't deserve it, some who did, some who should have gotten buffed. The skin sucks ass. Overall, this patch kind of blows fucking cock. I'm gonna give it a 5.5. It really is like a whatever patch. You know, I'm gonna buff it up to a six. Because there's nothing really that bad aside from Makali, but even then, it's like, I don't really give a shit. I feel bad, but fuck that bitch. I would give it a six. Pretty sh decent to kind of boring, kind of bad, nothing happened patch. Yeah, I'll leave it there. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed. Six out of ten Mark Mouse. I'll see you guys in two weeks.